In this video, we'll go over how to enter prime invoices for a unit price contract. You will need to have a couple of items in place before you create a unit price prime invoice. Under a unit price contract, you bill for the units completed during the payment period. For example, if the job is for laying linear feet of pipe. For each invoice period you will bill for the number of linear feet installed during that period, at the unit price stated in the contract. Each cost code on the prime contract might use a different unit of measure. So you will bill for each cost code's units separately. So, let's talk about how you determine the number of units installed in a given period. Superintendents and others on the job site fill out daily log reports with activity that happened on the job site that day. We will go over Sage Construction Management daily logs in detail in the lesson on documentation, but for now, let's look at the daily logs activities section. In this area, the field team can enter quantities and units completed for the day. Daily log reports can summarize quantities for you, so you can run the report for the given period to find the total units installed. We will use these values for the prime invoice units installed. As with all contract types, before you can enter a unit price prime invoice, the prime contract needs to be approved, and the approved status date must be earlier than any transactions. Any change orders you plan to invoice must be approved. With unit price prime contracts, change orders usually represent a change in project scope of work or additional unit price line items. In contract administration, go to Prime Invoices. Add manually. Select the Prime contract, and in most cases, you might leave the status as pending, so your team can review it first, but I'll select Approved here. Compare the order number and the invoice number. These are two different things. The order number determines which invoices contribute to the previously invoiced amounts that you'll see for the invoice. Any invoices with an order number lower than the current one will be included whereas ones with a greater number will not. If you've already entered three prime invoices with order numbers 1, 2, and 3, then the invoice amounts from all three will be reflected in the previous total column in the invoice. If you numbered the first three invoices 1, 2, and 4, and then later enter an invoice with order number 3, only the first two invoices are included in the previous total amounts. You should accept the default order number that Sage Construction Management fills in automatically, except in very unusual circumstances. If this order number is out of sequence, the previously invoiced totals will be incorrect. On the next page, let's leave option A selected, which is to enter invoice quantities for units installed, based on cost codes in the original contract, plus any approved change orders. We're going to go through how to enter retainage invoices in the next video. In the next window, the grid shows the list of cost codes with description, units, and unit price, estimated total quantities, and the total daily log quantity from any daily logs. It also shows the total units that have been previously billed based on the order number. Any existing invoices with an order number less than this one contribute to the previously invoiced quantity. The current invoice quantity column shows the difference between the total quantity from daily logs, minus any quantities that have already been billed. You can change these values if you need to. Click Add in Next, and that's all that's needed for a unit price prime invoice. We're taken to the Prime Invoice Overview page. If you need to make changes to the header information or add comments to the invoice, you can click Edit. Notice there's a space for comments and another space for internal comments, which would not be viewable by anyone outside the subscriber organization. Let's generate a lien waiver in the invoice to send to the project owner. First, click Reports, Prime Invoice Lien Waiver. Notice that you can select one of the four types of lien waivers. Conditional Progress, Unconditional Progress, Conditional Final, or Unconditional Final. Just a note here, the lien waiver templates provided with Sage Construction Management are only for demonstration. Lien laws vary by state or province, so you shouldn't rely on these sample templates as a legal format. In the video on Prime Invoice Settings, I'll show you where you can upload your customized lien waiver formats. We'll select Conditional Progress and save this PDF to Linked Files. Then, go to Linked Files and click View, which opens the PDF of the lien waiver. If you have DocuSign set up to integrate with Sage Construction Management, you can use one of the DocuSign templates to collect an electronic signature on the lien waiver form. Now, we'll generate the invoice. Select Reports, 
Prime Invoice Details. Notice that several formats are available. You can generate the Prime Invoice showing item details, or you can show items grouped or summarized by the different options you see here. Since we'll be sending this to the project owner, we'll select items summed by owner code in this example. We'll leave the default template selected, but you can upload your own Prime Invoice formats to settings. Next to Export option, select Save PDF to linked files, and then click OK. Now we can scroll down in the Prime Invoice to see linked files, and both the invoice and lien waiver are present. Let's send this to the project owner. Click Reports. Prime Invoice Details. For the format, we'll select items summed by owner code. For the export option, select Email PDF. This gives an additional line where we can select the email template, and again, we'll leave default selected. Click OK, and you see the Email Prime Invoice window. You can modify the recipients and CC lists, verify that the Prime Invoice and Lien Waiver will be included as attachments, and scroll down to see the email template. Click Send Email. When the email is sent, you can scroll down in the Prime Invoice window to see that the email has been recorded as sent. In this video, you learned how to create a Prime Invoice based on a unit price prime contract.